1995, a new character was added to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon to bring a breath of fresh air to a show that was declining in ratings. Did the initiative achieve the expected results, or did it accelerate the end of the series? Today, I will explore the history of Carter, the sidekick that time forgot. Carter Dawson was created by Mark Edens and Bob Forward. Still, it would be safe to say that David Wise also played an essential part in his development. He was voiced by Bumper Robinson, a voice actor known for playing Bumblebee and Blitzwing in the Transformers animated series. He was an actor in both animated and live-action shows, and voiced characters for many video games. Between the 8th and the 9th seasons of the show, CBS wanted to revitalize the show to compete against shows like X-Men the Animated Series and Power Rangers. The changes came from the executives at CBS and included the new characters of Carter and Lord Dreg. The show's format also changed a little bit, with heavier continuity than the show ever had before. April O'Neil was moved to a guest role, helping the Turtles as a freelance journalist trying to make a name for herself with news that wasn't about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the inclusion of Lord Dreg was done to replace Shredder and Krang from the show. I'll go over the story of this character in a different video. David Wise, a screenwriter who was essential for the show's development, acted as a showrunner for many seasons. But he decided not to come back this time after learning that CBS was blaming him for the decline in the ratings. But his retirement from the show didn't last long, as he was called to come back and fix the first episode. Wise accepted to come back for a price, but this may have affected the overall feel of the season. One of the main plots of the last two seasons was a secondary mutation that the Turtles were going through. They realized it would happen because the mutagen that transformed them was also very unstable. This was a plot that was recycled from the never produced fourth movie. You can learn more about that story in this video and this video. While investigating the chances of getting secondary mutations, they ran into Carter, an unknown ninja. He would occasionally stalk them and help them in some fights. They crossed paths with him in the sewers, and he revealed that he was a ninja searching for Hamato Yoshi, the former master of the Foot Clan who used the same techniques as the Turtles. That was when he found out that Yoshi was now Splinter. The Turtles were reluctant to accept him in their small clan, but Splinter trusted and agreed to train him. Carter was very dedicated to his training at first. He even dropped out of college to learn from Splinter. But it was his college education that also played a significant role in his interactions with the Turtles, as he was very good with technology. Now you may be thinking, this character was like a mix of all the Turtles. What's the point of having him on the team? You would be right to think that, but that's because the Turtles were about to change. As I said, the original mutagen that mutated the Turtles was unstable. While they were on a mission, Carter came into contact with a drop of this unstable mutagen. He didn't mutate right away. Whatever happened to the ooze also changed the rules of the mutations. Under stress, he hulked out into a… um, whatever this was. While he had problems controlling himself in mutated form, he would later reveal to the Turtles that he was having mutations. With the help of Splinter, he would learn how to control himself. This new ability would allow Carter to go on missions with the Turtles, something the writers couldn't do with April. This helped the show be more action-oriented, but it could have been done without him as well. As I said, the Turtles would start mutating randomly into mindless brutes. Carter would fill in the missing roles to help the Turtles stay out of trouble. Unlike Carter's mutation, the Turtles weren't in control of themselves. Carter had a brief nemesis, Jet McCabe, a character voiced by Robbie Rist who gave his voice to Michelangelo in the original movies. He would come back many times to voice his characters for the franchise. Jet and Carter were students at the same martial arts academy, but Carter had kicked him out after Jet cheated. Apparently, he was a bad loser. Jet wanted revenge on Carter, so he stole one of his creations, the Turboflex, an armor that increased human strength by a factor of 20. But they, along with Leonardo and Michelangelo, were kidnapped and sent to a wrestling arena in a private asteroid that belonged to Karg, the martial arts master of the galaxy. 
This was part of Lord Drake's plan to eliminate the turtles. Of course, it didn't work, and by the time the turtles and Carter were ready to escape, Jet decided to stay behind with the Turboflex, knowing that the arena was a place where he wouldn't be kicked out. And he was never seen again. So far, Carter was an interesting addition to the team, but the turtles still had some trust issues with him. In one event, Lord Dreg kidnapped and replaced him with some sort of Terminator. This imposter took his place and betrayed the turtles. The four brothers were saved by two warriors from the far future of 2015, Landor and Merrick. They would end up going into the future to learn that Carter was a Lord Dreg Enforcer and made the invasion of Earth possible and long-lasting. The turtles would discover that the Enforcer was a robot. Upon their return, they avoided that future thanks to Carter defeating his doppelganger. Despite this changing the future entirely, Landor and Merrick would remember this adventure, but more on that later. By the season finale, the Turtles discovered a way to fix their second mutations by using the Vortex Crystal. This crystal was also essential for Lord Dreg because it would allow him to warp time and space and summon his armada from across the universe. But another alien wanted the crystal, Doom Quest. This resulted in a battle against Dreg and the Turtles. By the end of the season, the crystal was destroyed, but a few speckles of it remained in Carter's knife. After discovering this, the Turtles had hope again that they would be able to cure their mutations. David Wise decided he wasn't going to come back for the last season, and Jeffrey Scott took over as a writer. He had to finish all the plots, one of them being Carter. In the first few episodes of Season 10, the Turtles finally found a way to reverse their secondary mutations. But Carter also wanted to find a cure for his crazy mutation. He was no longer passionate about learning from Master Splinter. The whole adventure made him want to go back to his everyday college life. Donatello found a way to cure Carter, and then he said goodbye and left. But not too far. The Turtles were captured by Lord Dreg, who absorbed their and Krang's life force to make himself more intelligent and as powerful as his enemies. Carter returned to Master Splinter, worried about the Turtles and regretting being unable to mutate to help them. Splinter then told him that the fix only stopped him from transforming, but genetically speaking, he was still a mutant. This meant that he could still transform if he wanted to. Carter sent a message into space that would bounce back to Earth in 20 years, specifically to Landor and Merrick. They responded by coming to the present of 1996. Carter told them about the Turtles needing a life force transfusion from some Turtles from the past. They went to the finale of Season 8 and extracted the Turtles. I guess going back a few hours and helping the Turtles before falling into a trap was too inconvenient. The Turtles from the past and present finally succeeded in defeating Lord Dreg, Shredder, and Krang. But Carter, who was still transforming out of control, felt like he couldn't really go back to college. That's when Landor and Merrick offered him to come with them into the future, where they could be able to cure him. Carter accepted, said goodbye, left with them, and he was never seen again. The character was never used in any other adaptation, unless you count this easter egg in the fourth season of the 2012 TMNT show. Carter, as a character, had many problems behind the scenes that conspired against his success. He was imposed onto the writers to revitalize the franchise, and it wouldn't be a stretch to think that perhaps the main problem was that the writers just didn't like him. The show was sinking in ratings, and the last season wasn't even properly aired in the United States. So many of the fans of the franchise may not have even been aware that the character existed. So viewers didn't know he existed, and the ones who knew probably weren't very impressed. And they weren't impressed because the writers weren't really sure what to do with him. He started as a ninja seeking knowledge, became an unpredictable sidekick, and then wanted to quit and go back to college. He was also a fighter, a student, he was great with machines, he was a mutant, and he was cool. Pick a lane, Carter! This lack of definition in his characterization may be why he hasn't been brought back in any other adaptations. Yet. Carter went into the future to the year 2015 or 2016, so don't be surprised if his next appearance is as a time traveler. Thanks for watching.